and welcome to another Folgit Lab Report. I'm BCAP here at the Institute for Protein Design, my colleague Ian H. If this is your first time tuning into Folgit Lab Reports, we produce these videos on the first of every month to tell you more about the science behind Folgit. In this video, I want to talk about the latest ligand binder design puzzles in Folgit. The goal of these puzzles is to design new proteins that can stick to target small molecules. For example, in the recent FMN ligand binder design puzzles, we're trying to design a protein that can bind to flavin mononucleotide. This ligand is photoactive, meaning it responds to light. If you shine blue light at it, FMN will change its chemical structure. And if we had proteins that bound up FMN, then those proteins could, in turn, become responsive to blue light. In the future, this might mean we could make proteins whose functions could be turned on and off with the flick of a light switch. Imagine a cancer medication that only gets turned on when you shine a blue laser at it, or a type of insulin that's only activated if you shine blue light on your skin. Other small molecules have other useful properties too. For example, there are small molecules that could be useful for artificial photosynthesis or help break down toxins. Sometimes we'd like to bind a small molecule simply to soak it up. For example, a binder that soaks up the hormone cortisol might be used to slow down or even reverse inflammation in the body. But these cool applications will only be possible if we figure out how to design proteins that can bind to small molecules. But binding a small molecule is not easy, and it's a lot different than binding a protein target. In order for a protein to bind a small molecule, it must contain a natural pocket. This is just a cavity that something can nestle into. Normally, when we think about protein folding, we think about a protein collapsing into a compact ball. This happens because of something called the hydrophobic effect. By folding from an extended shape into a compact shape, this minimizes the amount of surface area that has to interact with the surrounding water. However, a protein pocket does just the opposite, and it opens up a lot of new surface area that has to interact with the solvent. In general, having a pocket will make a protein less stable. So one of the challenges in designing a protein with a pocket is finding a solution that is stable enough to support the pocket. We don't want that pocket to collapse. AlphaFold is a great tool to have for this. If AlphaFold predicts your protein to fold into a shape that has a pocket, that's already a huge accomplishment. It suggests that your pocket is stable. But simply having a pocket is not enough to bind a small molecule. The pocket also needs to be complementary to the target. The small molecule should fit in the pocket like a hand in a glove. And any polar atoms on the ligand will need to pair with hydrogen bonding partners on the protein. These hydrogen bonds are important for specificity. They ensure that our protein binder only sticks to the target molecule and that it won't bind to other off-target molecules that it encounters. To understand this, we need to recall the problem of buns, or buried unsatisfied polar atoms. Polar atoms are most stable when they can make hydrogen bonds. A polar atom is unhappy if it's buried in such a way that it cannot make any hydrogen bonds. When we design hydrogen bonds into our binding pocket, we're creating polar atoms that must be satisfied by the ligand. And if an off-target ligand tries to sneak into that pocket, its inability to make those hydrogen bonds will prevent it from binding. And that's how we achieve specificity. So go try the latest ligand binder design puzzles with these key concepts in mind. And that brings us to this month's design of the month. This month, we have a FMN binder from puzzle 2248. And we see here in our website viewer that this ligand sits right in between two helices stacked on top of a beta sheet. Um, and it looks like it fits nicely into a little pocket here but a lot of the ligand is sticking out into solvent. So let's go look at this and fold it. Uh, I like to view all of the designs with the protein design default view option so I can see all the polar atoms and hydrogen bonds. Um, now this is a nice mixed alpha beta fold. So we have a, a nice beta sheet here with two helices stacked on one face of it and our ligand fits down nice right between these two helices. Um, and the first thing I notice is that um, a lot of this ligand is sticking out into solvent, but that doesn't terribly concern me here because 
these is the, this is the polar end of the ligand. You see lots of oxygens and nitrogens on this side of the ligand. These are polar atoms that like to make hydrogen bonds with water. Whereas the other side of the ligand has lots of carbons that are hydrophobic, and these like to be buried. Um, so Blaze Geek has done an excellent job of burying the hydrophobic side of the FMN molecule and exposing the polar side to solvent. Um, now, one result of this is that uh, there are not very many hydrogen bonds between the binder and the ligand um, because of most of the contacts are hydrophobic. And this should be okay for tight binding because remember, the hydrophobic burial is what causes most of the, the tightness of the binding interaction. The problem is that it could cause us some problems with specificity because there are no polar atoms in this binding pocket. And that means that just about any polar small molecule might be able to nestle in here and tightly bind to our binder. Um, so that is the only reason that we, we do like to see polar contacts in a binding pocket. This one hydrogen bond here does look nice and that, that could help. Um, and it could prevent, for example, a, a non-polar ligand from burying this asparagine here. Um, but it is something to think about. I might like to see, for example, a hydrogen bond to this nitrogen buried in here, or even this oxygen on the end. Uh, those could give more specificity to this design. Uh, the other strength of this design is that AlphaFold folds this protein nearly in the same conformation as the design. Um, however, AlphaFold does like to bring these two helices a little bit closer together and fill in this pocket where the FMN ligand sits. Um, so in order for this to be a successful binder, we might have to refine it just a little bit to make sure that AlphaFold can predict this protein with the pocket intact. We want to make sure that the protein already has the pocket preformed when it encounters the ligand, so the ligand can slide right in. Um, aside from that, this looks like an excellent design. We, of course, see lots of buried hydrophobics in the core and lots of blue polar residues on the outside, which should help for proper folding and, and make sure this protein is nice and soluble. Um, as always, we want to encourage you to please share your favorite designs with scientists. We'd love to see what solutions you think are the most exciting, regardless of how they rank on the folded leaderboards. That's it for this month. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and we'll see you next time.